Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, Luke here again today, as well as Ghost. Hello, hello, hello. Got a bit of a different one today, but just as exciting as always. We're going to be unpacking Switzerland and their role in the new digital transformation era, uh, DLT, blockchain, CBDCs. Um, as part of that, we're going to be looking at the Swiss National Bank. We're going to be looking at the Bank of International Settlements, in particular, 6SDX and their project Helvetia. Uh, proof of concept and work that they're doing and, and then we're going to tie this all in uh, into quant and their work with CBDCs and the overall scope of Overledger network so to start us off Ghost is going to go down a bit of a history lesson and show us a little bit about Switzerland well well I would just want to say before we get here um, sure. thank you to uh, SDX for for fe featuring quant in one of their tweets or or Q and T at least for about two minutes before deleting it, um, because you gave the us the inspiration for this uh, this talk. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so why why are we talking about uh, Helvetia? Well, um, Helvetia is almost like the uh, personified uh, representative of the native Switzerland people. Um, now. Uh, we're getting into his, some history here, but um, before, like during Roman uh, Roman times, uh, Celtics actually uh, had uh, colonized this area right north northwest, really, of the Alps, and between the Alps and the Jura, which is a, a shorter mountain range, there's a Swiss uh, Swiss plateau, and that's where they stayed. And you can see this on the map right here right above the Alps. Um, so again, these were the Hel Helviti. And these Helviti, great warriors, um, but also surprisingly peaceful. Um, we have even have a Greek historian, Posenidas, Nidias, noting that they were rich in gold, but peaceful. Now this may have been uh, setting the, the standard for when later on, when they became 22 cantons and uh, I think it was the Council of Vienna um, after Napoleon. We'll get to that later. But <laughs> uh, in essence, this like they've always been predisposed towards being a neutral state. Um, but the Romans would not let them to 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 be this way. Uh, uh, they were thoroughly Romanized. Um, Caesar, Caesar was a key part of this uh, transition process. And so through the Romanization, they became um, uh, heavily, heavily inundated with infrastructure. And this was due to the Pax Romana, which is like the, the Roman peace that was imposed after you were conquered by the Romans. You know, you, your state was integrated into the, the greater Roman Empire um, they built roads. They would uh, encourage you to make like Roman baths and uh, you, you know, like the gladiatorial rings and all these different Roman traditions. Um, but the the Hel Helvetians and all the other the other uh, Celtic tribes that were in this area, they they still kept uh, a lot of their previous um, cultures. But just very some very interesting stuff. If we can go to the next slide. Luke. Sure. So banking, secrecy, and diplomacy. Um, being landlocked, right? Uh, Switzerland, or what, what became Switzerland, uh, really needed a way to differentiate themselves from all the surrounding powers that, uh, that were a could have been opposed to them. We're talking about England, we're talking about France, we're talking about Germany, Italy, so Rome, uh, all these people that could crush uh, Switzerland if they so chose to do so. Uh, the the Swiss Alps and the the Jura before, which previously had been a nice uh, bulk work against uh, uh, conquerors, had been overcome many hundreds of years before, so that wouldn't serve as a sufficient means of defense anymore. So strategically, and uh, they started to decide to be uh, neutral benefactors for uh, all, for basically the entire European aristocracy. 
Um, they did this in 713.13. The Great Council of Geneva allowed the disclosure of banking clients' information. And this set a precedent for the strategy of providing neutral banking services among warring states, um, kind of like Bitcoin is right now. So very, very interestingly. And, and you would see over time and like time again, whenever warring states would, would go to battle with one another, whenever a state would let raise taxes too much, or whenever there was an interfaction conflict like the Protestants versus the Catholics, um, those seeking capital flight would come to Switzerland. Um, and they had the cutting, they had to be cutting edge in order to serve the best uh, uh, services, which is like, you know, consumer privacy, insurance, trustworthy account systems. Uh, that This picture right here is actually a, a picture of their, their bank vaults for gold that are carved into the mountains themselves. So extremely well fortified positions of defense for holdings of physical goods. Um, Switzerland became, as we know now, the de facto trustworthy place for money to be held. Um, and so the Congress of Vienna in 1815, after Napoleon's overthrow, um, enshrined Switzerland and it, its 22 cantons, because it wasn't yet federally unified yet, um, as a permanent player within, like, the permanent player of peace within like the warring states of all these European powers. And in 1934, the Swiss Federal Assembly made it even more entrenched. So it's like, wasn't a, it was a civil offense before, but they made it a criminal offense to disclose client information. And this is, was known as the Swiss Banking Act of 1934. So basically, uh, Switzerland, even though there's all these initiatives for worldwide uh, KYC, worldwide, uh, banking, like like basically, auto regulatory regimes of banking, Switzerland has still maintained its, its position as an autonomous state that preserves the privacy of its clients. It, it's more so, <laughs> more more necessary to its existence than even chocolate or or skiing. So, take it away, Luke. Cool. I think that's kind of an interesting uh, bit of context as we head into, um, you know, what they're doing in the digital transformative, um, you know, this whole new industry with blockchain and DLT. They're really acting as, again, kind of that, that middle player, that infrastructure kind of player that allows all the other parties across the world, um, you know, globally to transact. Um, it's kind of like taking that, you know, back even in the in the early days, you know, um, all these banking things that they're kind of doing the same thing again in... Um, in a different state. So if we go to the next the next slide, we've got some some more interesting things about Switzerland, don't we guys? Yeah, yeah. So this is just briefly um, showing you how, uh, so you, the white outlines show the different cantons. So there's 22 of them. Each one has their own banking institution, by the way. Interesting right, so enough. Gonna... Cantons are essentially states, pretty much. Like yeah, in, in the, yeah. yeah, in essence, yeah. And uh, we can see also that the, the the overlap of all these different languages and cultures mm. uh, after Rome fell and after the Roman like empire's influence over Switzerland fell, um, there was actually a huge swath, you know, the German uh, uh, barbarians, as I think they would say, <laughs> like came cascading over these plains and they really colonize a huge amount of, of Swiss territory. That's why you see so much German here. Um, but we also have France and the more French side of Switzerland. We have Italian. Um, we even have this romance, romance. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, this like, like pro, like, like, uh, what would you say? It's, it's a form of Latin actually that like became localized and still exists to this day. Um, so Latin is, unlike what you've been told, is not entirely a dead language. There are still areas that um, speak it uh, just in a distorted form, just like Sanskrit. Um, Sanskrit's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so that kind of leads us into the next stage where we're going to talk about who are the players that are taking part in this uh, transformative era. And when I say transformative era, I'm talking about this switch where Gilbert always talks about, um, you know, re massive digitization. Yeah, you know, like re-architecting the financial infrastructure. You know, and like that, you know, that's a big bold statement. But 
uh, you know, Switzerland is at the forefront of this. And at the forefront of this uh, is Six Group. Now, Six Group is a, uh, a large publicly listed company based in Zurich. And uh, if we look up below... Uh, uh, unlisted, see... Luke. Oh, it is. Oh, sorry. It is. Un... I get confused. When I see unlisted in public, I get very confused. But, um... <laughs> it's like public permission. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, and so we can kind of see the ownership structure below, and you and you'll notice it's um it's it's heavily uh heavily well, it's pretty much entirely owned by financial institutions and banks. Um, you know, you've got big banks there at thirty three percent, um, commercial and investment banks closely followed, foreign banks, cantonal banks. So that's kind of what Ghost was talking about there, um, like the regional banks, uh, and things like that. And so, six. Well, Ra- Ra- I want to point something out: the sure. Ra- Rafa sign banks. Those mm. are essentially a type of credit unions they're named after the rafis like rafa sign i think that's his name um that it's spread all across germany eastern europe and obviously switzerland as well so it's just interesting that credit unions have a a place here Mm. uh you know a, a proto form of democratizing credit creation um in a very explicit way before the likes of DeFi and other um, modern mechanisms that we're seeing in the, our crypto ecosystem. Uh, but go ahead, Luke. I think uh, just an important thing here, uh, and I see a lot of parallels with SIA, but it, it says here that the uh, the shareholding agreement ensures that the ownership structure remains stable over the long term. Shares may only be transferred on a limited basis, and the, the board of directors must approve any change to the shareholder structure uh, in accordance with the user-owned, user-governed principle. Um, the parallel I see with SIA is when we created our SIA video, you'll see that the ownership structure is sort of similar where it's owned by a conglomerate of um, old-timey or legacy financial institutions and banks. And um, while SIA does provide uh, international uh, infrastructure as well, on our next slide or maybe perhaps the slide after, you'll see kind of the, the services that SIX provide and how they fit into all of this. Um, And so we've just got a quick little two minute uh, video here that kind of explains one of the branches of SIX um, called the SIC. Uh, And what was that? It's uh, Swiss International Clearing? Yeah, Yeah, Swiss Interbank Clearing Clearing System. Yeah, so we'll just quickly- So this this video says a whole bunch about not only SIX and uh, the Swiss interbank clearing system, but also about just uh, where Switzerland always has to face itself in general. So go ahead, Luke. Sure. So we'll just quickly throw. We're gonna have a few little videos like this because they're 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 good. This lady kind of creeps me out. <laughs> no joke. Where was the first Her face doesn't move the, the entire time. <laughs> where is the world's largest particle accelerator found? And where is the world's densest rail network? In Switzerland, one of the leading nations for pioneering infrastructures. Pioneering services for global payment traffic also come from Switzerland. In the 1980s, the first real-time gross settlement system, SIC, revolutionized international payment traffic around the world and continues to set standards today. SIC is the Swiss Financial Center's secure and efficient payment traffic hub. Regardless of whether they are credit transfers, salary payments, security trades, or credit card payments, every transaction in Swiss francs runs through the SIC system. SIC processes hundreds of millions of transactions annually, worth 40,000 billion Swiss francs and more. Every transaction submitted undergoes the same strict security and quality checks. Only when all criteria are met is the transaction irrevocably and definitively settled. A check is made for each transaction to ensure that sufficient coverage exists. If necessary, the Swiss National Bank supplies liquidity to the system and is bound by law to ensure the functioning of cashless payments. Swiss infrastructure solutions will also provide innovative leaps in the future. And that goes not only for the world's longest rail tunnel, but also for the new, most secure and fastest SIC clearing system. Since 2016, SIC is committed to using the latest international technologies 
and is driving the advanced digitalization of payment services. Those looking to break new ground are and remain Luke, do you actually have like an Apple Watch? With six interbank no. clearing and or like any of those wearables. System. No, I'm, I'm you can learn baby. more about the Swiss Financial <laughs> Center's pioneering. <laughs> I, I just don't see the the appeal. Print. I know that everyone's like, Welcome "Oh, it's the future." Six but, um, I just I don't know. Nah, yeah, you know, I like a classic watch. Yeah, I like a classic watch. I was just watching that video, and I I could not get the image out of my mind of that the SIC big like supercomputer. I, I just kept thinking it was like some AI that was going to rule us. I don't know where I, I was getting these. Weird it already vibes. it already is, dude. It already <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so basically keeping back on track, because I, I don't want this video to drag out for too long. I mean, there's a lot of juice in here. So if you guys want to split it up and come back, that'd be, that'd be dope. But basically... We'll just run through it, dude. Yeah. So Six, you can see on the bottom, owns these different um, tranches or branches uh, within the Swiss ecosystem. And we just looked at SIC, and that's basically the entire clearing settlement system for the Swiss infrastructure. Um, underneath that, you've got uh, the Six Swiss Exchange, you know, but you know the stock exchange, you know, trading securities, bonds, and all that stuff. You've got um, more clearing and more settlement and custody things. Uh, now, take note: on top, you have SDX. Um, now, that is the Swiss Digital Exchange, which uh, essentially goes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is basically like the new infrastructure layer that they're building on top of their existing systems that are going to plug into this new digitalization. Um, and so that's where, you know, like tokenized assets and CBDCs um, sort of come in. Do you want to add anything there, Ghost, or should we keep moving? Yeah, just in, in essence, also, um, it's notable that, uh, as we saw in the previous video, SIX, um, Switzerland, they're, they've always been at the forefront of technological deployment. And tokenization is the key uh, piece of this technological change and transition. And this re-architecting of the... Uh, of our of our financial systems, right? And they so six actually imagines uh, SDX to ultimately um, take over all their infrastructure, like the core infrastructure process, in about like anywhere from what was like five to ten years. Yeah, it's pretty big. So like surprisingly quick transition time. Mm. Um, so and we're gonna see things like coronavirus, things like. Uh, who knows what else but the trend is only accelerating towards towards this so they they want to get this right cool now we, we're just going to show some uh some quick clips here just to give you a bit of a, a bit of context about what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build and these are just some clips from quarter uh which is the quarter conference uh and so basically we can we can kind of see like three tranches of their their approach here and you know at the at the bottom you've got foundation and regulation um, and so you can see that the people they're working with there you've got Finma so that's the uh, the regulatory the regulatory agency in Switzerland uh, you'll notice that uh, Quant was um, actually had an office or well, does have an office in Switzerland and did their ICO raise through Finma um, and so that's that's kind of Switzerland has kind of almost been a bit of a home for Quant. Um, you can see also there the BIS. Uh, dare I say I shouldn't need to introduce the BIS, but it's pretty much the papa of all papas, uh, the, the bank for banks, um, <laughs> the bank of international settlements. Um, and you can see there on their foundation development quite a key point that pretty much sums up where we're at. Um, build up a regula regulated exchange and establish central bank digital currencies. Now, this is important, Ghost, because... A lot of people think six digital exchange, you know, that's cool. They're just building a Swiss exchange for tokenized assets and securities, but they don't realize that the foundation of this whole ecosystem is tying it in with central bank digital currencies. You and, said that right, Luke. Yeah. 100%. And this, and this is, you know, and this is why it's such a big deal because to do so, you know, this is at pretty much at the forefront of innovation in this space. Um, and you'll see that as we, as we move along. Um, so your next thing you've got, product initiatives. So this is kind of more on the commercial side of things. Um, so you've got like separate banks and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously international ecosystem build up and standardization. Uh, I think I've seen some, a few key points from Tim, Tim Grant, I believe his name is the CEO. Um, he's, he's commented before that he wants this, he wants this framework and um, technology approach to be the global standard for tokenized assets, tokenized clearing, exchanging, and CBDCs integration. So, you know, they're not, they're, it's not just really a Swiss thing. This is a global thing they are building. 
Um, again, bang, uh, bang with FINMA, uh, obviously just covering their compliance and regulatory bases. Uh, so a CSD and stock exchange. So CSD, oh my God, it's security deposits, clearing and security deposits, no? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's the case. Yeah. Um, and the next one, so this is a digital bond leading Swiss financial institutions aim to expand to digital age in a risk controlled way in 2021. Um, and so you can see kind of, uh, kind of what like different little, what would you say? Like little, I don't know, like players that make up this. So you've got issuers, you know, so you've got your banks, your corporates, um, roles, I think you could say. Yeah. Yeah. Roles. Yeah. Yeah. Debt financing. So that's kind of, you know, your, your traditional sort of, you know, um, Basically, it's like an all-in-one platform sort of thing. Uh, you've got obviously custody banks on the side, and then you've also got um, buy sides. So you know, like people wanting to buy these bonds, buy these securities, to, to buy have these risk, assets. low risk returns on on debt. Right. So and, yeah, so you can you can see on the left side, you've got kind of like uh, what I would say supply liquidity issuers. So you know, these are people issuing the assets, issuing the money, issuing um, securities, and then you have. Like in the bridge there, you've got token for SDX, um, um, digital uh, Swiss franc. So that's kind of like the intermediary. So you're linking two parties. You're linking, you know, issuers and you're issuing, um, you know, the opposite side of the, the spectrum, you know, the buy side, the demand. So you've got your custody banks and people like that who want to, you know, uh, buy these things. Um, and so now we just have another, <clears throat> this is kind of, uh, this leads more into the DLT side of the six digital exchange. Um, and so you've got uh, two banks. Uh, transacting so for example they could be um, swapping bonds they could be swapping um, you know a whole range of things any sort of security essentially um, and so mm -hmm. in 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 the uh, matching engine of SDX it's all on chain on their ledger um, and so you can kind of see that there with the atomic settlements on DLT nodes so there'll be um, and interestingly here goes this is something I hadn't actually really well I had noticed before but I'm I'm taking quite note of it that every bank here is having their own DLT nodes set up. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be something SDX handles. Um, well, every bank has their DLT node and the deal, and more importantly, the DLT node is the, uh, uh, it's the backstop. It's the record of account. Uh, right. Like, like there's no, there's no paper here. It's all digitally, digitally uh, recorded and keep kept this way. Right. So uh, in, in, in this case, it's also like, uh, uh, there, there's a, a triple a triple entry accounting model here, where you have bank A, bank B, and then the DLT node coherence between these banks, um, where there's a platform that helps coordinate and logistically centralize execution of atomic settlement uh, with a matching engine for whatever they're try wishing to trade. Right. So right. just an interesting. And so uh, SDX, I believe, is building on quarter. And so this would be likely a shared quarter permission network between mm -hmm. these um, issuers and stuff like that. But again, it comes up to this, uh, you know, the whole point of the Overledger network and stuff like that is these different um, exchanges, these different banks, these different entities, they're all going to be running on different permissioned networks. They're all going to be running on different underlying technologies. And you need something that sits above all of them um, that allows cross uh, interoperation, uh, interoper interoperation, whatever, cross communication. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. Interoperation, interoperability, compatibility, whatever. Right. Um, and so this is kind of this is kind of like a what would you say like a top down view of what their infrastructure sort of looks like. So you've got the exchange. On the left side, you know, those are the big boys, you, your issuers and stuff like that. And then on the right side, you've got non-bankable assets. So those are things, um, you know, producing. So it's, it's sort of interesting. Companies. It's interesting that um, they have they have SDX not the only one running this uh, this network. It's it's inter interwoven between as we see bank xyz and the sdx notary as well yeah um yeah. which i think i think the notary indicates this is corda right they have yeah, a centralized yeah. notary. Corda. yeah yeah and um you can so, see to the left here it's so um, they have the sdx notary which is like the centralized coordinator in essence um 
And then they have the SDX network as a service notary, right? Yeah. And so this this extends their network to to private networks or like I, I think it's deployable on demand. It's also touching a company instead of just a bank, um, as well as the SDX tech team. Um, and so they have then at the bottom there an SDX gateway to where Coffee Co, Art Co, Insurance, Gallery, Broster, Producer, et cetera, et cetera, can all, um, uh, I guess, uh, bootstrap uh, authenticity or identification of, I guess, are they imagining NFTs or securities well, or... Well, the way I see it, right, is, you know, if you go back in the day, you know, exchanges and brokers and stuff like that, you know, you've got people who are producing things and, you know, so mm -hmm. in, your, in your general sense, you're going to have companies, you know, small businesses and things oh, like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this they've got PVP. a, yeah, yeah. You know, they've got to, they've got to plug into the exchange somehow for, um, whether it's, um, doing a raise, um, whether it's, you know, offloading equity and stuff like that, you know, you could see, um, equity rounds. I'm talking like series A, series B, seed rounds, probably going to take, take part on the SDX. Like it's going to be like a, that's the way I see it goes. It's kind of like an all in one exchange. Um, I'm not sure if you get those vibes, but I kind of get those vibes as well. And so you have people on the outside who are looking to raise funds or sell equity and stuff like that. And then uh, this whole big network of, you know, people wanting to buy these securities and bonds and stuff and it all kind of like intertwined. So SDX is kind of like the digitization of that. And we can see we can see as well that um, it's being interwoven with multiple different blockchains on the left side mm. and multiple third party service offerings on the right side. So more legacy infrastructure there. Yeah. Um, and so in a, in an instance where SDX uses Overledger, um, this would be part of the SDX gateway, which helps it um, as an API gateway between different blockchains and different third party service offerings. It can interoperate the core service offerings and also offer their network as a service to multiplex across multiple heterogeneous different situations. Um, so that's a, a pretty. You can you can see where Overledger starts to really supercharge this uh, this idea here they have. Yeah. So again, this is just one ecosystem, right? Um, and it's an eco. It's a big one. It's an ecosystem with mm -hmm. lots of players. But you're gonna have people on the other side of the world. Uh, you know, things that come to my mind are we trade. Um, you're going to have things like JP Morgan Dollar, Wells Fargo Coin, all these commercial coins or retail CBDCs, as well as trade networks and trade platforms and identity platforms and all these things that are running on different underlying technologies and um, different or well, different networks entirely. And so the way I see it is Overledger Network sits above all of those and it allows all of these different ecosystems to connect. And that's what it's all about, an ecosystem of ecosystems. Absolutely. And this is now kind of where we get into the juicy source, right? Um, and now they are actually working um, with the Bank for International Sentiments, so the BIS, um, on some proof of concepts for wholesale CBDCs. And so the Bank of International Sentiments has opened like an innovation hub and it's a partnership with public entities, so um, like central banks, things like that, um, as well as private entities. And so, you, you know, um, you've got people like R3 and, you know, potentially Quant, from our opinion, potentially quant in this innovation hub to deploy these um, proof of concepts and CBDC implementations. Um, so we've got uh, a few key players here, as I mentioned, R3, Accenture, UBS, Commerce Bank, Digital Asset. Um, well, and, and the Bank de France. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, as we were saying, it's a big innovation hub. It's kind of like a, what would you call it? Or it is essentially, it's a proof of concept, essentially where um, the use cases and solution designs can kind of be like not copied in the sense, but like used as like a, a, a base f platform for other solutions. Um, again, it's just more people in the, um, in the ecosystems, you know, like Hyperledger into work, all that kind of things. Um, this is kind of where it gets uh, introduced to Swiss National Bank. So this was actually uh, late or well, not really late i'm not sure if this is actually i assume this is european so i think it's october 2019 um six so the people we're talking about and the swiss national blank explore technological approaches for the use of uh digital central bank country uh central bank money in the settlement of tokenized assets 
Um, as part of a proof of concept, Six is working with the SNB to explore technical technological options to make digital central bank money available for the trading and settlement of token or assets between financial market participants um, and is provided by the Six Digital Exchange, which uses DLT. Um, and so this is this is where we get into the specifics, which is Project Helvetia. Now, Project Helvetia is an experiment between the BIS Innovation Hub, uh, Swiss Center, which is what we were just talking about, um, the Swiss National Bank and the financial market operator Six. Um, successfully shows the feasibility of integrating tokenized assets and central bank money. And so what that means is, um, I'm not sure if you, I don't really want to get into how central banks work as in issuing money to lenders and then you've got primary brokers and things like that. But essentially what they're saying is when a central bank issues like a wholesale CBDC, it can then be collateralized for commercial banks who can then lend out um, retail or commercial bank notes and things like that. Um, and so the project demonstrates the functional feasibility and legal robustness of settling tokenized assets with a wholesale CBDC and linking it a DLP platform to existing payment systems in a near live setup. The, uh, and this is just like their disclaimer, the experiment should not be interpreted as an indication that the SMB will issue a wholesale CBDC. Um, Ghost, maybe this one for you, do you wanna to touch on this one a little bit? Yeah, um, this is just the money flower, it speaks for itself. Right. So what are we, what is this, what is this, <laughs> what is this outlining? Uh, it's a, it's a, um, basically a, a taxonomic description of different types of money that, uh, we can see being, um, issued uh, across multiple different domains. Um, and they, this is, uh, actually before they really got into the specifics of what they want to build out, see what happens for um, CBDC. Um, and obviously, the, the, the sweet spot is right in the middle. And we see um, precious metal coins, for example, being universally accessible and peer-to-peer, -peer, but not electronic or central bank issued. Um, we see uh, Bitcoin being all of those things except centrally bank issued uh we see cash is everything of those things except it's not electronic and then we have the magic fed coin oh baby fed coin <laughs> uh and so that's um you know the fictitious idea of the federal reserve issuing uh pros po probably a wholesale central bank digital currency um so let's go to the next slide luke so yeah this is the cbdc pyramid um the bis loves to make little cute images um <laughs> and they're very useful they're very useful um they know what they're doing uh and so they look at all the different levels of what um what a cbdc needs um the first being architecture um then the next of whether or not it's clt um, then whether or not it's account or token based, so account or UTXO based essentially, or in this case, the last one is wholesale or retail. And you can see how, like why those uh, stipulations are, are being considered on the left. And uh, yeah, yeah, so you work, you work way up, you know, you can't have a pyramid by working from the top down. So go ahead, Luke. All right, so this is just going to be a little bit of like kind of like an overview sort of thing of uh, what they're working on. So we'll just quickly watch this video. Uh, this is their first proof of concept, proof of concept one. Are we going to watch the whole thing? No, That's just two minutes. Proof of concept number one. Okay. We investigated the delivery versus payment use case. The delivery versus payment transaction demonstrated stems from an over-the-counter trade and is settled bilaterally on the SDX platform. The cash leg and the asset leg settle atomically and instantly, eliminating replacement cost risk and the need for a central counterparty. The tokenized assets that we use for demonstration purposes is a digital bond. And the cash leg is settled in wholesale CBDC. On the SDX platform, we have the nodes of Bank 1, Bank 2, and the Notary node. To initiate a bilaterally agreed delivery versus payment transaction, Bank 1, which is the seller of tokenized assets, 
enters a delivery versus payment instruction into the SDX system. Bank 2 is the buyer of the tokenized assets and enters a receive versus payment instruction. If the instructions match, reservation requests... I, I think in general we're going to see notaries and um, uh, regulatory automatas to be merged into one. Yeah, I can see the same. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That's and wholesale CBDC. Upon the successful blocking of tokenized assets with Bank 1 and wholesale CBDC with Bank 2, the reservation is confirmed by the system. Throughout the whole transaction, the notary node checks whether state changes to the ledger concern an old state. In particular, it checks whether credits and debits of tokenized assets and wholesale CBDC of the transaction haven't been spent already. If successful, the notary node signs the transaction, which confirms the transaction and triggers the value transfer. Now let's take a look at the delivery versus payment process. So essentially what that is showing there is, um, this is kind of like the diagram of what we kind of just seen there. So um, delivery versus payment is essentially just uh, two parties pretty much swapping assets. Uh, and so what they're doing here is they're making it more trustless so that it's on the blockchain. Um, they've both got their own nodes and there's a notary node, which basically is kind of like the overseeing node. So the sees that they've both got the same records and the same transaction and it like confirms it almost. Um, and so what we can kind of see in this diagram here is you can see that uh, the SMB will issue a, so the central bank will issue a wholesale CBDC so this is this part here, I believe, right? And that gets issued to a commercial bank, right? And then the commercial bank can make uh, transactions with another bank using these uh, uh, wholesale CBDCs, which is pretty much just digital cash uh, and the swap for uh, tokenized assets. So like bonds, securities, uh, things like that. Um, they made this diagram so much more confusing than they needed to. Right, right. Why, why did they not just overlay the SDX over the SIC? Because all <laughs> the, there's bank one over here and then there's bank one also all the way over here. You get confused that they're like, it's the same institution, but it's just like bank one over oh, on the right side is the physical institution of the Swiss uh, interbank clearance system and SDX is the, is the DLT node they're running. But I mean... <laughs> It could be so much more simple, um, but keep going, Luke. Right, so basically this is kind of just um, demonstrating how wholesale CBDCs could swap between different parties and um, entities in the ecosystem, and then how it can use that uh, delivery versus payment sort of sort of thing. What, what Anything else you want to mention there, Ghost? Well, it, I, I notice here that um, in the old model, the SAC, Everything has to go through the uh, Swiss National Bank, the SIC. Um, like, they, they has to route through there. But in in on the left side, um, it, it mainly is just a, like a formal formal entity, like finalizing and ensuring finality. But the bank two and the bank one are actually directly connected there. Um, right. So. It's just a it's just a subtle change, but it's showing where we're all going as this uh, architecture, you know, terraforms itself. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things that could happen in the future with regard to this. But otherwise, uh, I have nothing to say. Oh wait, no, we I have something totally to say. Go back. Okay. Go back. Um, ISO gateway. Yeah, but they're using uh, two double O, double two. Well, well, that that that's one ISO standard, but there's another one we know of. Yes, but do you think <laughs> I don't? I don't know. Sure, that's being. Wait, wait, no. Listen, sense. listen. So this triggers an ISO two zero zero two two message. So that's just the message. That's just a syntactic standard from the Swiss interbank clearance system, the SNB node in the SDX. A custom ISO gateway, an ISO gateway, translate the message into an SDX specific language. Brother, what else is going to be that? 
Well, from what, my what else? What uh, else would be an ISO gateway? <laughs> see where you're going, and you're trying to say that this is a a blockchain one. So, in my opinion, the it's it's still a two double o double two because if I read what it says, this but triggers that's in, just the message. That's not the gateway. Yeah, this but, is the ISO gateway. Yeah, but the ISO gateway translates that message into a specific yes. language. Yes. Yeah, but isn't that the whole point of two o double two? No. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a, it's no, a it's not. It's two, 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 oh, two, double, oh, two, two is a, a new message standard such that uh, all these different banks can more easily communicate with one another. But this is not just between banks. This is between banks and this digital world over here, as we see on the left. It's translated into something that's SDX specific. And SDX is a whole different virtual entity than SIC. You could convert the entirety of SIC into ISO 20022 message, and it still would need to be translated to be SDX specific. Right. I, I just don't see how that's... Um... Anyway. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Go for it, dude. Keep going. All right. So the next video is... um. Is kind of like another little overview of the whole project of Isha. So it's only two minutes here. I just thought it'd be good to, good to, pummel it in, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't think we need to actually. I, I kind of agreed with you. The Swiss um, National Bank, the bank for international before, settlements. Did you did you think we we, we only needed six, one uh, joined video? Forces as part yeah, but this one's got Alexia. this one has the second proof of concept. I, I think. Oh, you wanted this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah money my bad. Could be integrated into a distributed ledger technology based financial market infrastructure. The project consists of two proof of concepts. Both test the functional feasibility of settling tokenized assets, which are traded and settled on the six digital exchange in central bank money. In proof of concept number one, the cash leg of the transaction is settled with a wholesale central bank digital currency, wholesale CBDC issued directly onto the DLT infrastructure of SDX by the Swiss National Bank. As part of proof of concept number one, four use cases were investigated. Issuance or tokenization of wholesale CBDC, redemption or detokenization of wholesale CBDC, delivery versus payment settlement of tokenized assets against wholesale CBDC, and transfer of wholesale CBDC or wholesale CBDC payment. In proof of wholesale CBDC. So just just to just to touch on these points. So issuance of a wholesale CBDC. So that's the central bank issuing um, a cash form in digital form, essentially, right? Um, redemption is redeeming the digital form for cash. Um, Point three, delivery versus payment settlement. That's what we just talked about again. So that's where one bank sells a tokenized asset for a wholesale CBDC. So it's just selling tokenized assets for tokenized money. And then the last one is more like a cross-border payment almost where it's transferring the digital dollars or the wholesale CBDC between two large players. CBDC payment. In proof of concept number two, Interoperability between the DLT infrastructure of SDX and the Swiss RTGS system, SIC, is established and the cash leg of the transaction is settled in SIC balances. As part of proof of concept number two, one use case was investigated. Delivery versus payment settlement of tokenized assets against SIC balances. So basically what that's describing there is uh, you now introduce the SIC, which is what we talked about before. It's kind of like the big clearing house. And this is uh, where you introduce real-time gross settlement, uh, which we've discussed uh, before. And this is kind of the link between the old and the new, right? So this is similar to what the Bank of England's described where their new real-time gross settlement system is gonna be DLT interoperable um, via an API gateway, <laughs> cough, mm, but, mm. Um, and so you've got the same thing here where the real-time gross settlement is going to be able to link and communicate with this new digital DLT world. All right, let me get on to the next slide. Now, the part that most people are probably here for, and you've, you've stuck through 40 minutes, so thank you. Quant connection. Now, Ghost and I are going to dabble in a little bit of speculation. Um, 
and I think it's right. It, it's founded on it's founded on basis, right? And so, we, it's no secret that Quant have built the technology and the infrastructure <laughs> for this exact sign, uh, this exact type of work. And it's also no secret that Gilbert has had meetings and is working with central banks. Um, and so, some of these quotes here are just to kind of highlight what is said in uh, in the past. Um, you know, I think it's time to realize and acknowledge that traditional financial service companies are very active. They bring regulations, government, mass market capabilities. Uh, and then there you go. He mentions some players like JP Morgan, Fidelity, Six, Deutsche. Um, again, he mentions it on the, so- on the other side as well, how they're all getting into, um, uh, getting into the space. Um, and now this is, uh, this is another one an actual specific one. Uh, we're working on being the financial infrastructure to move digital assets between networks. There's a lot of this activity space, a lot of activity in this space by banks. We're making QNT the way to sign, encrypt, and secure digital assets to move them between banks, making it a universal utility token. Can you imagine QNT moving JP Morgan coin to another bank or Libra coin? All these need uh, interoperability to transfer between parties. So JP Morgan coin. Um, or Wells Fargo coin are essentially commercial issued uh, digital dollars, right? And so that's like another extension of these platforms where the wholesale CBDC is the central bank issued money. And then on the retail side, you have things like JP Morgan coin. Um, And now the last quote of Gilbert is, this is our approach. We're bringing everyone together, interconnecting TradFi with new DeFi uh, for the first time. Imagine the possibilities of thousands of FS clients and institutions using decentralized blockchains safely and easily through Overledger. Use cases are huge. Um, We go on to a few more SIX and SDX specific things. Uh, Someone asked specifically about SDX. He says, who says we're not talking to SDX? Winky face, cheeky. Um, he also commented that he's no sick, uh, six and met them. And I believe the first time he mentioned that was middle of 20, 2019. So at this point, almost two years ago and about when the, uh, the proof of concept started to, uh, really bump up a little bit. Uh, and then some comments about, uh, the bank of international settlement. So the big daddy who's running this innovation hub, uh, we're close to those policymakers, including the bank of international settlements. It's a transfer transformational time in financial markets and infrastructure. And then he also goes on to say, they're looking at both domestic and cross-border. We've covered both use cases and capabilities and have been talking to the central banks, BIS, and policymakers in governments on how this should work. We'll help shaping the landscape for CBDCs. Um, the reason I've included these is because it's encouraging to see that they're play- they're talking to some of the biggest influencers and innovators in this space. You don't get much bigger than six SDX and the BIS. Um, and if Gilbert says that they're close and that they're meeting with them and talking to them, um, it's encouraging. Uh, uh, the image on your right is part of Gilbert's central bank digital currency Twitter thread, uh, where he specifically mentions the use cases we're talking about uh, with the uh, Swiss central bank. Um, anything you want to add before I get into this one, guys? Go for it. Uh, so Gilbert recently went on a Cambridge uh, a Cambridge video to discuss entrepreneurship and stuff like that. Um, the video isn't 100% public yet, although we did see a few snippets a few days ago, and that's kind of inspired us. Well, it's definitely inspired me to look at this uh, quite interestingly. And I'm going to, this is uh, not word for word, although it's almost identical. I, I tried to transcribe this from the video clip. Um, I would include the video clip, but it's in not YouTube format, so I couldn't get into the slide. But this is essentially what he says. Uh, when he talks about central bank digital currencies and I'll try and tie it into what we've just watched and talked about with Helvetia. So uh, we've been talking to about five central banks and we've been working on this where you can issue a wholesale CBDC backed by the central bank that currency gets put into the financial system. So we're talking about uh, this is what the SNB has been doing by issuing wholesale CBDCs. Um, all of the commercial banks have access to that collateral the same way they deposit with central banks today. They collateralize that whole sell CBDC, then they are technically authorized to issue retail CBDCs, the Barclays Pound or the JP Morgan dollar. And then they can use that 100 million allocation to issue 100 million in the retail equivalent and put that into the system. So what we are describing is essentially what we've kind of just seen with Project Helvetia, where you have the central bank issuing wholesale CBDCs and those wholesale CBDCs being used as collateral for commercial banks. Um, and that can also be used, as we saw, with a delivery reverse payment um, on tokenized assets or bonds. Um, I thought this was an incredibly insightful quote, not only because it confirms that they're working with central banks on this, 
but the way it is described almost to me sounds very close to, if not identical to what um, Six and SDX have been working on. Um, now, Ghost, you've, you've got something in here to add on this? Yeah, yeah. So this is a recent tweet that I, I thought was really notable. Um, MyCrypto.com uh, points out that um, when you have Tether uh, on... Well, okay, so, so you know, in the case that, like, uh, you want to issue a stable coin, right? Uh, if you have, like, a stable coin that's the same type of stable coin, in this case, Tether, um, on that comes to a, a side chain called, this one's called XDAI. Um, the Tether, US dollar Tether, like, the Tether that comes from, like, Ethereum, Right, and then you have Tether that comes from Binance Smart Chain, and they both go to XDAI. Are cannot be put in the same pool of Tether together because there are complex dependencies of of bridging and, and bridging allocations and and mixing them together just makes a whole whole, whole mess, really. Um, so, uh, if Luke, if you could go to the next next slide. But the solution for this is uh, pretty simple uh, in the sense that Quant has already built it. Um, uh, Multi-ledger tokens are a really uh, seminal uh, innovation where you have a, a private ledger, which is the uh, basically the inception event for, for the, the stable coin. And then from that point, you can track the stable coins as they go from ledger to ledger to ledger. Um, and this is a, a means of being able to uh, provide an auditable source of where the tokens come from without depending on complex bridging solutions that may have emergent phenomena where things just all break down. And then that's when fraud can occur. And so uh, the the flexibility and security that you have with native and 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 interoperability, and additionally overlaying upon that a multi ledger token uh, schema that's based upon the IMF's uh, central bank uh, digital currency model as well, makes it to where uh, you not only solve problems but you get uh, uh, the big boy institutions involved in this, and so. Uh, it's it's what what quant is doing is extremely important in this space. Right. So, a lot of people ask me about this MLT. Um, you know, are they issuing some other quant? Is quant the settlement asset? Quant is not a settlement asset. It's the fuel that runs these networks, right? And so, for people to use this ecosystem and network, they must have quant tokens, um, and they're like the fees, the licensing. Um, the collateral of the network, right? So no one's actually sending a million dollars in quant and redeeming it a million dollars in quant. It's not, it's not how it works, right? It's not. It's like not Ripple. Ripple. It's not Ripple. So MLT is like a framework, right, that allows people to mint or upgrade their tokens. So for example, Wells Fargo JP Morgan coin can be upgraded to an MLT token, and that allows it to um, cross outside of its home network, uh, while still keeping a record of it on its on its home network, is that something you would say, Ghost? It's kind of like, it's kind of like if you had uh, J.P. Morgan coin running on railroads, like on a railway track, and you had Wells yeah. Fargo coin as a car on a road. You know, you can't pick up a car and put that on the railway, and you can't pick up the train and put it on the road. MLT sits above it and makes uh, the train and the car be able to run on both platforms or both networks at the same time. <laughs> so, I can't wait. I can't wait to see some trains run on some roads, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like what it's all about, you know, because yeah, um, you know, quant quants all about making cars run on, run on rails and trains running on roads, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a very simplified <laughs> form of an explanation, but, it is. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just. I'm, I think it's a very good explanation, um, and I think also it's um, incredibly. Uh, uh, it just there's so much opportunity here. Uh, hmm. We're talking about uh, levels of, of, of clearance uh, and and a utility that uh, eclipses what we see nowadays, which is in the trillions uh, on the daily. Um, so we're 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 on the verge of a really fundamental 
uh, transformation for sure. Right, and so this all kind of ties into their interchange work, where you can you can have two parties settling atomically um, using Overledger on different uh, different networks and technologies, and that all interoperates with uh, the broader financial market. So you've got you know digital currencies and stable coins, you've got agency banks, so you've got like Swift, SIPO, Bax and Chaps, we've talked about that before. Um, you've got Pay UK, so open banking, but you've also got it interoperable with um, wholesale CBDs and synthetic CBDCs. Well, yeah, and you see and you see right here as well, um, the schema and the terms they use back there um, wasn't quite as formally defined. Mm -hmm. um, synthetic CBDCs at this point is basically retail. Um, as well, at this point, we have the old logo. Overledger is still thought of as an operating system, whereas now they've pivoted towards a uh, API gateway. Um, but the whole uh, possibility still remains the same. Um, and this is uh, basically atomic interchange of any asset for any, uh, any other asset. Um, at the cheapest price possible. That's what we're looking at right here. Right. Um, so basically that kind of sums up uh, what I wanted to talk about today, but the, really the take home message from me, um, and I'm sure Ghost you can add on this, is just expand what you thought was possible a little bit, right? We're not talking about, um, you know, and yes, I get things like Uniswap and Sushi Swap and these DEXs and stuff. They are useful. Um, they are good, obviously. Um, they open up people to be own, their own liquidity provider. They open up um, people to trade, um, you know, autonomously without the inter intermediaries and things like that. And of course, those are useful use cases. But the Overledger network is designed for institutions at a whole other level that you can't even understand. Um, you know, we're talking about quite literally like the biggest settlers and clearers in the world. You know, central banks. Uh, real-time growth settlement system, wholesale payments, uh, cross-border payments. Uh, you know, that's we're talking billions and trillions of dollars a day. Um, you know, and if Overledger Network is, you know, targeting these guys and that's what they're doing, they have an unbelievable amount of market demand. The team has swamped so much. They're expanding consistently. I mean, it's just incredible that the level they're playing on. And this whole CBDC and wholesale CBDC thing, you know, people always ask me like, oh, we're going to have to wait forever for, you know, for these things for quant. You know, two or three years ago when Gilbert was, you know, hands on this stuff, you know, in it before anyone was really talking about it, no one really cared about central bank digital currencies. They weren't really a thing, you know. Quant isn't just central bank digital currencies. It's all these networks. You know, we're talking IoT platforms. We're talking uh, traditional banking APIs. We're also talking that, you know, they can interrupt just normal cryptography, um, cryptocurrencies. You know, it's not just it's not just one thing, you know, it's... It's just one little slither, the slither of the pie, I would say, yep. the, the CBDC work. And to me, if one slither of the pie is billions or trillions of dollars settling, I mean, it just goes to show the level that these guys are aiming to work on. You know, the scope is cannot be understated. Um, and I guess that's, you know, people will look at this video and say, look, you know, you're pulling at Gilbert's words. You're looking at connections for here and there. That may be the case, you know. But he said they're working with five central banks on this exact same thing. Even if it's not Project Helvetia, disclaimer, I'm, I'm pretty certain it is. Even if it's not, they're still working with five central banks to do this same use case. I mean, that shouldn't be understated. That is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, again, Gilbert only did an ICO. It was relatively small for the time. I mean, you know, $10, $12 million raised and look at what he's built. You know, the, the company is turning profitable now. You know, we're going to see an uptick in volumes, you know, in traffic, the Overledger network going live. We're going to see the ecosystem expand. You know, what can Gilbert do with additional funding? And, you know, it's really exciting to see where this goes. And, of course, you know, with an asset like Quant, you know, no inflation, almost all the supply already circulating, so under the radar, only 15,000 holders. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it when Luke gets so motivated to uh, to to go into the possibilities of what Quant can do. Um, I think he said it perfectly. Cool. So well, that's. I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, I think we uh, we had a wonderful overview of uh, 
the possibilities of uh, six exchange SDX Switzerland in general and uh, what quant can bring to the table uh, and uh, by the way thank you seek for uh, providing so much of the content and the overview and this lovely little diagram of a network of networks an ecosystem of ecosystems that quant uh, and overledger can provide um, so thank you all for joining us it was a fantastic quantfy lounge episode uh look forward to more coming and uh luke and i will see you all later thanks guys for watching uh take it easy and uh, bye now stay quantfy see ya <laughs>